Oh, I believe the word has mostly spread, but in case anyone here is unaware, um, I will be going back to Chicago very soon, uh, which is why Pam's joy and sorrow was me. Um, wow, <laughs> what a time. I spoke on Father's Day. Uh, some of you were here for that. For those of you who weren't, I'm gonna recap just a little bit. Um, the message of that that I reflected on last time was about growth through tragedy. It was about um, not just bouncing back from the things we go through, but actually growing from them and learning and changing and evolving. Um, and that's actually, it's a concept that I've been working on for years in a cabaret of mine back in Chicago, which is lovingly tongue in cheek called the FML Cabaret, um, which I won't say what the F stands for because we are in a church. Um, <laughs> I think you know, but for, for my life, is actually something that I have started to say. Um, you know, when we are struggling and we're fighting and we're angry and we're kicking and screaming at all the things that the universe is doing for us that's against us, I've started to remind myself how much the universe has gone through for me to even be here. How much has the universe gone through for you to be here, for your parents to have met? for wars to have been fought, for all the things that we've been through. The universe has gone through a lot for each and every one of us. And sometimes that doesn't really feel like it's a good thing. Sometimes we hurt a lot. Sometimes we wanna die. I said it, it's scary to say, it's scary to feel. But I think everybody feels it from time to time, even if we have no intention of ever acting on that. That feeling is there, and that's a universal feeling. And that's one of the things that I, I really wanna work on helping people through as I go forward in my life. And what I really wanna share with you guys today, before I take my leave, not forever, and don't worry, those of you who bought cabaret tickets at the Paul's house, that is still happening in November on the 9th, if you still want tickets, ask Jane. Um, I would like to give you a little bit of my own personal example of this concept of triumph through tragedy. When I came here in November, I was coming from having lost my mother just a few months prior, and the home that I was living in, we, the owners of the building went to foreclosure, and we were forced out, which was really unfortunate. I was living with my best friend. Things were fantastic, it's a beautiful place. I'd been doing a show for almost two full years that was fantastic and so fun, Tony and Tina's wedding. Um, I had a great job, everything was secure. My mother had just come through a very difficult time with an abusive boyfriend, and I helped her get through that, and everything was okay, and I felt great and then everything collapsed. My mother died. The show ended. We got thrown out of that apartment. The job let me go for financial reasons, and I was broken. And I had no other choice but to come here. I felt it in my heart that I needed to be here in my home. I needed to handle my mother's affairs. I needed to just sit in the desert and cry and be broken. I lost everything of who I was. I had no idea who I was, what I was gonna do, where I wanted to be, how I was gonna possibly survive, and I almost didn't. It was really difficult. But one morning, very early after I came here, there was a praying mantis sitting on my porch. And I don't know if you know anything about a praying mantis, but they are actually a very strong symbol of a spiritual journey and of stillness. And I sat there with this praying mantis for hours, just looking at each other, just chilling. I got a little close to it, took a couple pictures, said thanks to it. And I just thought about that. I, I was searching on the internet, what are, what are praying mantises, what is stillness, how do, how do I do a spiritual journey? Like I just, I kept thinking about it. And the, the concept of stillness and sitting in that stillness is something I, I'm so bad at. I'm, I've got a million problems to solve and I'm always doing it and I'm going, I'm moving and what's the next thing and what are we gonna do and how do I fix it? But I couldn't fix anything that broke. The only thing that I could fix was myself. And I, I didn't know if I could do it. But I sat in that stillness and I came here and I started a spiritual journey and a spiritual quest that I did not know where it was going to take me or what was going to end up happening in the end 
but I've actually found a place in ministry that I never, ever would have considered before. I didn't realize that all the years through my cabarets and my performing and my sharing of my story with people that that is actually a form of ministry. And I, I never would have thought that I was somebody who was capable of that. But even just sitting with somebody for coffee and telling them what you've been through can be ministry sometimes. Just listening to someone can be ministry sometimes. I think a lot of the time listening can be ministry. And I was listening to the universe because it clearly had things to tell me. And so for the first time in probably my entire life, pardon my language, but I shut the hell up and listened. And it's, it's been singing to me lately, which is really a new thing. And the song that it's been singing to me is one of strength and one of being vulnerable as a strength and one to share my story. I know a lot of you here know about the cancer that I deal with um, and some of the other health problems I've had. I know tons of people in this room have lost people they loved very recently. And it's okay to not be okay sometimes. It really is. And when you have a community of people around you, it's okay to go to those people and say, hey, I'm not okay. I'm not today. I will be, but I'm not right now, and I need you. That's okay too. And it would be really great if someone says that to you, if you could be there for that person, even if it's just sitting and listening, or maybe you can't, but you, you could help them find somebody who could. But just that community support is so important in being able to survive. And not just survive, but thrive. And that's something that I think we all would like to do. And I not only found a little piece of myself again here, but I found these new pieces of myself again that I, that I never thought in a million years I would have ever found. I found this amazing congregation. I, I, don't, I never went to church. My mother tried to force me as a child to go to church, and I was like, oh, church. But that's not what this is, the, that word church. It's a dirty word sometimes. But this is a community of people. And the first time I stepped in here, none of you knew me, but you embraced me. And that was such an amazing thing. And I, I continue to try to do that for other people as well, because that was a lesson, that was a gift that I was given in a very treacherous and painful time for myself. And I want to share that gift with other people, and I want to share that gift through song, through hugs, through cookies, whatever silly and ridiculous ways that I can, I want to share that. And I don't know if I would be able to stand here and say, I'm going to go out into the world and I'm going to minister. I'm going to help people. I'm going to hold people. I'm going to listen to people. Had I not been so devastatingly broken by this last year of my life. And as much as I am not grateful <laughs> that my mother is gone or that my show ended or that I was thrown out of my house and lost my job, I am grateful for the place that I'm standing right here, right now. And that's kind of a tricky thing sometimes for people to identify with, that you can be grateful for where you're at and where you've gotten to and through without saying, hey cancer, thanks for being in my body. You don't have to say that, but you can be grateful for who you are and what you've come through, and you can come through it. I don't know if there's anybody who's sitting in this room right now who is feeling horrible or pain or suffering, but if you are, trust me, you can get through it, and you are worth doing that work, and you deserve kindness from yourself. That is something that I also learned, to be kind to myself, to look at the hysterical fits of crying and the punching of walls and probably almost breaking my knuckles and screaming profanities and the crazy drastic things I did to try and get through. It's okay. It's all right. I didn't kill anybody. It's, I think it's a good thing. <laughs> and I didn't kill myself, which is a really important thing. A really, really important thing. So I don't want to talk for too long today, because what I would really like to do is sing a song for you. 
Now this song that I'm about to sing is kind of a silly little song. It's less serious than the last one that I sang. And this song is actually my swan song that I sing at the end of my cabarets all the time. Because the message of this song, despite the silliness of its lyrics, is that if you can hold on to something, whether it's a little song, a little bluebird, whether it's your friends, your, your family, whether it's birth or chosen family, an activity that you love, or just even a mantra that helps you get through the day. Hold on to something, and you can get through whatever crazy journey life takes you on. And it's, it is a very silly song, and I'm going to really silly it up for you, because I hope you guys enjoy this song as much as I enjoy it. But before I sing, I also would like to say a very incredibly sincere thank you to this congregation for embracing me and for helping me through this time because I tell you, I would not have made it if you were not one of the things that I was holding on to during this time. And I'm not 100% healed, and I am certainly not done grieving or processing, and I'm sure that even though I feel up right now, there are more downs coming, but I know that I will get through them. And my time here has really helped me to get to that place. And so again, sincerely and truly, thank you for that. And I hope that in some way, I've given you something positive to hold on to, or that I've impacted you in some way that was a good thing. I hope I've never said anything mean to you, and if I did, I apologize, I'm very sorry, I love you. But before I start crying, I'm gonna sing this song, uh, because if I don't sing it now, I might not be able to. So, allow me to be a little silly, to get a little water, and I'm coming at you, so be careful. Hit that song for me, Ricky. <clears throat> Just a little louder. As we stumble along on life's funny journey, as we stumble along into the blue, we look here and we look there Seeking answers anywhere Never sure of where to turn or what to do Still we bumble our way Through life's crazy labyrinth Barely knowing left from right Nor right from wrong that we can do is hope a bluebird will sing his song as we stumble along. It's a dismal little world in which we live. It can bore you till you've nothing left to give. Seven overrated wonders, seven underwhelming seeds, six excruciating continents, Antarctica. Oh, please. Still, you mustn't let it lick ya. This planet, oh so bland. Keep your eyeball on the highball in your hand. As we stumble along Cross life's crowded dance floors As we push and we shove We live and we learn And when we finally leave the bar And you see that morning star We pull our bootstraps up and homeward turn And we stumble away Through dawn's blinding sunbeams Barely knowing right from right Or left from wrong But as long as we can hear That little Stumble, bumble, fumbles in 
then there's Palumbo. As we stumble.